Hi, I'm Miss Kristen of the Oosterhout from Library. Outside, the sun is shining, the flowers are blooming, and the bees are buzzing. When some people see bees, they run, but others might not notice the bees at all. So let's stop and take a closer look at bees because bees are helpful and our world needs bees. May 20th was World Bee Day. So won't you please give bees a chance? Which is the name of the book that I'm going to share with you, Give Bees a Chance. Now in the book, the narrator, who's the person telling the story, is very excited about bees. But Edgar here, he's not so sure he likes bees. Are you afraid of bees? Edgar is a little bit afraid about getting stung, which I understand. But once Edgar learns how important bees are, he might think a little bit differently. And so might you. Then I'll share some buzzy bee activities that you can do at home. So let's get started with the book, Give Bees a Chance. Oh, and the book's a little bit silly too. So let's get started. Give Bees a Chance, written and illustrated by Bethany Barton and published by Puffin Books. This is my best buddy, Edgar. We love all the same things, like board games and dinosaurs, strawberries, and honey. And of course, bees. Oh, uh... Except that I don't really like bees. Sure you do. Didn't I tell you there are about 25,000 different kinds of bees to love? Why, there's the squash bee, the sweat bee, the yellow face bee, the horn face bee, the cuckoo bee. <gasps> Maybe. And then I told you all about the three types of honeybees. Queens, drones, and workers. Ah, get them away from me. Psst, blow gently on bees to make them scatter. Thanks. Like I was saying, I don't like bees. But why? Mostly because of their stingers and attached venom sacs, which are the cause of painful bee stings. That part you told me last week. Last Sunday, Edgar, brave tears, the ouch. Super mean bee. Stinger. Zap. But that was just one bee. Couldn't you still give bees a chance? Maybe I just need to remind you how weird and cool a honeybee's anatomy is. They have five eyes. Two stomachs, a honey stomach for turning nectar into honey, and a bee stomach for digesting nectar. Four wings, they lock together for flying, then come apart for easy storage. Six legs, complete with the pollen basket, an area on the hind legs that can store almost a million grains of pollen. Stinger. Ouch. Maybe you just need some time to get to know them. How about millions of years? You know, bees lived with dinosaurs. And even ancient Egyptians kept bees. In fact, honey from bees was found in Egyptian tombs. And it was still edible. Ooh. Honey. Perfect. Maybe you just need some honey. Bees make honey. 
Uh, why are you telling me all this stuff? <sighs> so you'll give bees a chance. Once you learn how great they are, you're bound to fall in love with them. Hey, check out how honey is made. A bee gathers nectar from flowers. Bzzz. Nectar goes into a special honey stomach called a crop. Bzzz. Contents of the crop are spit up into a new bee's mouth. Bzzz. The new bee breaks down the sugars of the nectar within her own crop, and this process nectar is passed along to several more bees. Bzzz who each break down the nectar in their crops until it becomes honey. Then, the honey gets barfed into a honeycomb cell and fanned by the wings of bees to evaporate moisture. Lastly, it's sealed with beeswax to keep it safe until it's eaten. Um, did you say barf? Just one pound of honey takes two million flowers and thousands of bees to create. Ah, too many bees! Looks like I haven't convinced you just yet. Nope, because they're all gonna sting me. <sighs> oh well, bees do sting sometimes, but not because they're mean. Stinger stories. Bees only sting to defend themselves. You look delicious. Bzzz, back off. Or to avoid getting squished or smashed. In fact, many bees lose their stinger after attacking, which is sort of like your hand disappearing if you pinch your sister. Also, wait, what are you wearing? Uh, bee armor. <laughs> That's not gonna work. It was designed for dragons. I think it can handle bees. Well, there is a kind of armor that beekeepers wear, but it looks a quite bit different. It allows them to collect honey and beeswax without getting stung by startled bees. You know, I love honey, but I'd be willing to give it up forever to never see a bee again. But giving up bees means giving up so much more than just honey. Bees have a big impact on the food chain. You see, in order for plants to grow fruits and vegetables, they need the right ingredients. And a major ingredient they need is pollen. Sun, water, pollen. But since flowers can't move, they can't always get pollen from each other. I want to make a strawberry. Throw me some pollen. Uh, I don't have arms. That's where bees fly in. They act as a pollen delivery service, helping give flowers the ingredients they need. A bee's fuzzy body catches pollen from flowers. Pollen falls into the next flower the bee visits. A single bee can visit over a thousand flowers a day, making bee pollination powers unparalleled, which means without bees, there'd be a lot less of yummy stuff to eat. And bees are disappearing in large numbers. Bees actually need our help. Okay, I take it back. I don't want bees gone. I even sort of want to help them. As long as they don't sting me. Planting bee-friendly flowers is a great way to help the bee population. Uh, won't that just attract more bees? Hopefully, yes. But just approach a bee like you would a dog that you don't know. Don't get too close and don't try to touch it. Unless you're a flower, it shall lose interest and fly away. 
And if more people like you give bees a chance, they might just have, well, a chance to make the world a sweeter place. Now, have I told you how much I love bears? The end. Bee facts. Honeybees have hair on their eyes. Bees sometimes communicate by dancing. An average queen bee can lay up to 2,000 eggs in one day. And sometimes bees sting people like me. We learned so many interesting things about bees. There's even more information in the book. So I hope you'll check it out from the library. One of the things that we learned is that female bees have pollen baskets and little hairs on their legs. This is how they pollinate or carry pollen from flower to flower or plant to plant. But how does pollination work? Let's try a demonstration to find out. Let's be a pollinator. You're going to need paper, crayon or markers, stick or straw, I use a straw, a tape, powder, pollen. So here are some options that you can use for your pollen. You can use jello or flavored drink powder, mac and cheese powder, or sugar. I use sugar. And now optional, you can choose to use pipe cleaner for legs, like I did right here, or other craft items to decorate your bee. First, you're going to draw a flower or flowers on a piece of paper. Next, you're gonna draw your busy bee. You might wish to draw the bee on a heavy piece of paper or glue it to a piece of cardboard package like I did right here. I just used an empty old box I was gonna throw in the trash. Then you're going to attach the bee to a stick or a straw. I used a straw right here. And now you have your choice. You can add tape loops to the bottom of your bee right here and with the sticky side out by just taking a piece of tape, holding it together, and you make a little tape loop like that. And then stick it to the bottom of your bee, just like that. Or you might choose, if you have pipe cleaners, to make some pipe cleaner legs to see which will the pollen stick to. So it's your choice. You could try one or you could try both at different times. It's up to you. So now once you have your bee assembled, you're going to pour some of your pollen on the flower. I use sugar. And then go ahead and buzz your bee right over the flower and over the pollen that's in the middle of your flower. Now once you have buzzed around, then turn your bee over. What do you see? Do you see the grains of the powder or sugar that you used? Is it on the tape or on the pipe cleaners that you used? Do some of the grains of pollen fall off as you're buzzing your bee around? Try it for yourself and find out. Now, Let's take a look at a bee up close and in slow motion. See if you can see the pollen on the bee's leg and what happens to the pollen while the bee flies away. Pretty cool, right? You can also be a citizen scientist by simply observing, counting, and reporting the bees that you see. Last year, I shared the information about the Great Sunflower Project, which is fun and easy to do. I'll put a link in the description box below. I'll also include some great, simple activities that you can do at home, like making a bee out of pipe cleaners or making a bee hotel, a pretend one and a real one, and so many more bee activities. I'll include a link to all of those resources in the description box below. I hope you had a good time. I hope you keep exploring and keep buzzing along.
See you next time. Bye.